Greetings, saints. Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. This is your humble servant, Brother GL for M3A Medical Missionary. And while I'm here, I just want to take a moment to say hello to all our listeners from Examino Les Écritures TV from the Asian community. We are in our series, The Purging of the Floor, and this is part three, saints. Part three, we have seen part one. In part one, that there are a lot of Protestant church out there are fallen, and people thought they could uh, rely upon their ministers until they, dis they discover the true colors of their ministers. Therefore, a lot of people are making an exodus from the the other nominal churches, the other Babylonian churches, but without not having any place necessarily where to go. In part two, we have seen that those people could have an opportunity to come in our midst, but that the Spirit of God withdraw, uh, the Spirit of God would leave the people out until he cleansed the sanctuary, until the cleansing is done first, and only after will God allow his people, these people to come, as Jesus says, all the sheep I have that are not part of this fold. Now, today, this is part three. So last week, we have seen the cleansing of the sanctuary, Ezekiel 9, the great slaughter. So today in part three, what we want to do, saints, we want to consider the aftermath of that slaughter all right but if there is one message trust me you ought not to miss is next week message again tonight we will consider the aftermath of the slaughter of ezekiel 9 and without no further ado let us have a quick word of prayer father in the name of jesus First, Father, I just want to thank you so much for another Sabbath in your presence. For the opportunity that your people can come together to worship you, honor your name, magnify your name, and Father, to also learn. As time is very, very critical in the time in which, in which we're living. Be with us. May your Holy, Holy Spirit work throughout all the arts, throughout, uh, throughout through the heart of all the listeners. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, as I said, beloved, we want to consider the aftermath of the great slaughter of Ezekiel 9. And our first text for today is found in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, commonly known in the Seventh-day Adventists as the first tangible message. And as a, as a matter of fact, it should not be said commonly known in the Seventh Adventist Church because it is what it is. It is the first angel's message. So basically, the text says, I saw and I saw another angel fly in midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, listen, every nation every kindred and tongue and people. We'll get to that part next week because when there's a word said, it is not said out of the blue. There is a reason why those words are said and in that order. It is not out of the blue, but it is for next week. I tell you, don't miss, don't miss next week's message. Sing, verse 7, Sing with a loud voice, Fear God. Give, uh, fear God and give Him Give glory to him for the hour of your judgment has come. For the hour of my judgment has come, is come. No, that's not what the text says. Why are we trying to change words? It does not say the hour of my judgment, the hour of yours. It says the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So the hour of his judgment 
is come. So what do you what do we mean by the hour of his judgment is come? This is the problem that we have when we don't skip word, when we take what is written there, all right? Because it didn't say the hour of my judgment, because we know since 1844, Jesus have left the holy place to the most holy place. So the judgment begin with the judgment of the dead and every name's passing before the Lord until we get to the judgment of the living. So there is indeed a judgment where each one of us must appear before the judgment throne of God. Yes, there is a judgment. Don't get me wrong. But in that text, it says the hour of his judgment. By the way, in case you have not seen the previous part, go back, especially in part two, where we put a lot of emphasis on victory over sin. So what it is refer here, the hour of his judgment is come. It means God is the one sitting in the throne of the accusies. Heresy. Apostasy. This man does not know anything about the Bible. Because Daniel chapter 7 says the book were open and it was the ancient of days presiding the judgment. And now you want to make me believe that he is the one sitting in the bench of the accusies? Yes. God is the one sitting in the bench of the accusies. So before you say heresy, apostasy, let me bring you the reference. Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel, angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angel. And there was war in heaven. The word war, because there was no sword, there was no bomb, there was no nuclear, nuclear missile in heaven. But the text is clear. It says, and war broke down in heaven. Let us consider the original text, Greek text, number 4171 in the Greek, strong concordance in the Greek, which is polemos. Which does not mean a, a, a war with missile, bomb, sword, gun, but it means a polemic, which is a war of argument. So what was Lucifer's argument? God is restraining something from us. God is putting commandment that cannot be kept we can uh, we can govern ourselves as angels without those laws so what has been at stake here it's god's character why because his character is displayed in his commandment but why Exactly did Lucifer did what he did. Let us see, by the way, what the spirit of prophecy has to say about this. You will find the answer in Spiritual Gift Volume 1 in the chapter, The Fall of Satan. You will find the answer also in early writing where it says uh, where it says uh, that uh, uh, that next to God Jesus was uh, Jesus uh, God there was God and Jesus and right next to them Lucifer had the third rank so now you got God Jesus Lucifer third rank 
So I thought it was God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. But that's not what the spirit of prophecy is saying. So basically, I want you to focus on something because for those of you who were there with us last week when we spoke about victory over sin, don't miss this one. So when Lucifer started to rebel like that against God, God seeing what's been, uh, what's been taking place in heaven, the harmony broken, he could have destroyed Lucifer just like that. But had God destroyed Lucifer, all the other angels watching the scene would have said, maybe Lucifer was right. And they would have started worshipping God by fear and no longer by free will. So God said, I'm going to give you 6,000 years. Prove the point. Prove your point. And at the end of the 6,000 year, it's the end. But what kindled the war? It kindled because we don't know exactly because there was two mystery in the Bible. The mystery of God and the mystery of iniquity. But what can we see about this rebellion in heavenly places? Because after God and his son have created the host of heaven he summoned all the angels before him and told them that his son and set the right position of his son but Lucifer was that much under Christ in rank in beauty and, th and things like that so he said why should he worship and not me the great controversy begins by worship and it will end by worship. Moreover, when God wanted to create it, uh, wanted to create the earth, uh, the, the Bible says that the council of peace will be between the two, talking about God and his son. Zechariah 6 verse 13 and Lucifer says oh come I'm not consulted you see Lucifer was coveting the position that Christ had so because of that he couldn't get that position he decided to rebel against the government of God but on that same book, Spiritual Gift, Volume 1, on that same book, early writing, it says after uh, God had decided with his son and to expel Lucifer from heaven, Lucifer realized his mistake. Lucifer was sorry. Lucifer repented from his mistake and he wanted to go back. But God did not want to take the chance and imperil heaven a second time. So there was no more chances for Lucifer. Do you see what victory over sin is all about? If God, if an angel, fallen angel, had repented and wanted to go back and God rejected him, what makes you think you will make it? In the time of trouble, in the time of trouble of Jacob also, or in the second coming, it's sin. God did not spare the angel. God did not spare his own son, by the way. What makes you think you're going to make it? Listen to also... Also, here it says that the, the dawn, the darkness before dawn, but there was one that chose to pervert this freedom. Sin originated, originated with him who next to Christ. 
third place in heaven. We're talking in rank. Third. Lucifer was third next to Christ. And been most honored of God and who stood highest in power and glory among the inhabitants of heaven. Darkness before down. Page, page one, paragraph five. So, do you understand? So, because God says go, prove yourself, and his character is at stake. So, therefore, in the judgment of that we see in Daniel, it's not about us. It's about God himself. So, we are only seen in the judgment because we are in the middle of the great controversy. Our daily action, our daily thoughts, our daily motives... Or daily, whatever we'll do, we do will determine on which side we stand. Either to enforce to enforce the devil's accusation, or in the either that God's character must be vindicated. Therefore. God must produce a people able to stand before him faultless, without spot, able to keep all his commandments. If he doesn't produce that people, Lucifer wins the great controversy. Therefore, God will have to stand in front of Lucifer and present his apology. I'm sorry, Lucifer, you were right. My commandment cannot be kept. It's going to have to resurrect the anti-Deluvian and say, I'm sorry to have flooded you guys. You were right in your iniquity. My commandment cannot be kept. It's going to have to resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to them and say, I'm sorry guys, you were right. Right, my commandment cannot be kept. Therefore, God has to produce a people able to stand before him. When Christ leave the most holy place, when Christ take off his, uh, his uh, lawyer, lawyer garment and put his kingly garment, and we have to stand in front of an angry God who is a consuming fire for sin without an intercessor. God must produce that people. And this is what this judgment is all about because God's name must be vindicated and the Ten Commandments, the law, is the transcript of God's character. So now, let us go back to that, to what, where we were, all right? So if God must produce is the one who's going to produce that people, it is good news. Because Satan will come and attack you. Look at you. You've been in the church for 40 years now. You're hopeless. There's no hope. There's no joy by and by. Give up. You think God can love a sinner like you? Look what he did to me. Me, a fallen angel. You think God can love a sinner like you? Give up. There's no joy. Your case is hopeless. But listen, I just told you that God himself must produce a people. Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Again, like I, like I mentioned so often, when it comes to sin, we don't think about anything else than the things that we do or the things that we see. We seldom think about the brain, what we put in our brains, our thoughts. For even thoughts 
must be brought into suggestion to the will of God and your feelings under the control of reason and religion. Your imagination was not given you to be allowed to run riot and have its own way without any effort at restraint discipline. If the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong. And the thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. So we have to protect the, our senses. We have to protect what's coming in there. Because once it gets in your head, the things get in your head, it goes down in your heart. And from the abundance of the heart, speak it the mouth. So victory over sin must be achieved in all things and in everything. Listen to what the spirit of prophecy says. Again, moral perfection is required of all. Never should we, uh, should we lower the standard of righteousness in order to accommodate inherited, inherited or cultivated tendency to wrongdoing. We need to understand that imperfection of character is sin. Christ Object Lesson, page 330. So now you understand? You understand what is at stake? It is God's character at stake. And I'm telling you, God will have it's his way because his way is in the sanctuary, meaning his way is in holiness. His way is in the sanctuary. So therefore, let us go look into the sanctuary. Because we know the judgment began in 1844 when Jesus passed from the, from the holy place to the most holy place. So let us consider the sanctuary service. Leviticus 16, 29 verse, uh, to 31. This is the anti-peak, uh, the, the, the day of uh, atonement in the days of old. And it shall, and this shall be a statute for uh, forever unto you. That in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your soul. It doesn't say look at your neighbor. It doesn't say it's to do journalism work and get lost into sensationalism that will take its present truth. It says you shall afflict your soul and do no work. Very important. Do no <coughs> work at all. Whether it be done, whether it be one of your, your of your own country or a stranger that sojourned among for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean for all, from all your sins before the Lord. First, are they active or are they passive? They are passive. Somebody else for uh, the priest make an atonement for you. Somebody else will do the work for them. And that someone is God through Jesus Christ. For what? So that you may be clean, clean from all your sin before sins before the Lord. And it shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you. You shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Let us see. Once again, in that text, Leviticus 6, 29 to 31, and do no work. The Millerites, they, 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 they believe that also, so much so that they started to sell their, 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 their property, they started to stop going to school, to go to work, because the text says you shall do no work. It's right there, black and white. They had not learned from the Thessalonian who, was, who stopped working also. So much so that Paul had to intervene and say, he who does not work should not eat either. But 
The text is there. You shall do no work in the day, and we are living now in the antitypical day of the atonement. The text says you shall do no work. So should I give up my job? Should you stop going to school? Because the text is clear. We are living in, in the anti-typical day of the atonement. So if you stop working because you think Jesus is coming very, very soon, the, the second coming is imminent, you stop working and wait for Jesus say, in a uh, like a, in a secluded area all by yourself, you're in trouble because that's not what it means. What kind of work is, is it talking about? Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. Work of the flesh. We we'll start in verse 19. But we have to, we have to do the work of the the Spirit, verse 22 and 23. Like we see, uh, uh, the atonement shall be will be made for them. So they were passive. Only thing they were, they were to do, they were to be willing to be willing. This is our work in this day and age. And finally, it should be a Sabbath out of rest unto you. Rest. Rest from your work. You think sin took God by surprise? He already had a plan. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth, of the world. Rest unto the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God gave his only begotten son. There was no greater sacrifice, no greater love. Rest unto what has been done for you so that that word can apply to you. Come unto me, all who are uh, weary and, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And ye shall afflict your soul. What is the affliction of soul? Isaiah 58. Was it in vain? What is what is it to you that we are uh, afflicting our souls in fasting? Have we done that in vain, purifying our heart? We I got the text, we get the reference. You see, the church must be purified. Of all sin, there was a cleansing right now in the in the sanctuary. But people don't want to to hear the word cleansing. They want, you know, like in the eighteen late eighteen hundred, all the way to to early nineteen uh, eighties. There was a contest, a preacher's contest. It started in the eighteen hundred. There was a preacher's contest. The one who can make and I mean. When I say make, we can preach, we can make have, uh, hell harder than everything else. Sometimes they, some preachers up there, they got a gift up there. They can make hell, hell be so hot. So hot. They're going to have you scared. They're going to have you burned before and in your own seat, sitting in the pew, listen to them. That's how hot hell is. So people out there are using Ezekiel 9 to scare people out there. While it's all about the judgment of the living. Of course, God will not have mercy. That's not my point. But instead, because we know the slaughter will be done by fire, which is the visible presence of God. We have talked about this before. And by the sword, which is the word. The word of God. So by saying oh, it will happen literally, well, it, it, it was so last week that Ellen White used it as an illustration. People don't want to talk, consider that it's about the old things, it's about the cleansing of the sanctuary. Jesus is right now cleaning, the cleansing the sanctuary, but we don't focus on what Jesus do. We like to focus on what 
Pope Francis is doing, what BB Gaga is doing, the food crisis, and what, what, all those things, the internet. But we focus on those things and we forgot what Jesus is doing right now. The cleansing of the sanctuary. But there is a problem in the cleansing of the sanctuary that Jesus is doing right now. Let me illustrate this for you. When I was a kid, every Saturday, it was the day that we would clean the house. The house had to be spotless. So spotless that you could literally take a plate of rice, put it on the floor, sit on the floor, and eat on the floor. Totally dust-free. That's a severe my dad was. And only after he would let us go outside and play with our friends. And I would go outside. We would play hockey. And then I would be tired of playing hockey. I would go in the house and get my soccer. Or if you're from South America or European, my football ball. So we could play soccer or football if you are from Europea, Europe, Europe, Africa or those countries. Would play football but when i got in the house the second time my dad would look at me funny and then i would get tired would decide to go play baseball i would go up once again and get my baseball bat my ball my glove but then my dad would look at me even more funnier very mad and then we would play outside with the kids i'm thirsty i would go out upstairs once again and take grab something to eat and go outside play with my friends and then something happened again. I would go up, uh, uh, upstairs to my house. And now my dad lose patience. He says, son, either come in or stay out. You cannot break it, bringing the dust of the outside in the house. You have just clean. Victory over sin. It's either you come in or you stay out. You can keep putting sin in the camp. Jesus is trying to cleanse that thing. The sanctuary and you can bring dust from the outside you either come in or you stay out but there was another thing after my dad left it was me my brother my little sister and my mom and you know as boys sometimes we can we are we are hard and that is not there like the cat is gone the mouse can start dancing it was hard for my mom to keep us on the discipline to keep the house clean. But then I was an altar boy at the Catholic Church. And there was one Catholic priest doing his practicum. And he, he used to come all the time to the house visit. And since our house now, my dad no longer there with his, uh, with his severity. So the house would be oftentimes dirty. And... And we, because we live on top, we could see him from a distance coming out of the bus. We knew he was coming to our house, and the house was a mess. You should see my house. It was a mess. So what would we do? We would take every the thing, open the wardrobe, pop it in. So I suggest to you, there are many white sepulchre, quieted from the outside, but from inside is feel with dead dead bones or dead bones there needs to be a cleansing of sanctuary filled and complete and once that sanctuary is closed uh, is, is cleansed this is where we see the aftermath of the purging of the floor of the 144,000 Isaiah 4 Verse 2, this is the aftermath. But don't think this is where our sermon starts for today. All the, the, the previous one was part of it. This is the aftermath of what's going on once the sanctuary is closed, once the God, God has purged his floor, once the aftermath, once, once the 144,000 already. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. Isaiah 4 verse 2. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escape of Israel. Escape of Israel, but escape of what? Of the great 
slaughter of Ezekiel 9. So they have escaped. So now, preacher, give us the context. You just said they have escaped of Ezekiel chapter 9. Give us the context. Well, we just read Isaiah 4 too. The context, you don't have to buy a book from the scholar and study the error. error. Scripture unlocks, unlocks scripture. The context is right the verse before. Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah 4 verse 1. And in that day, in that day, after the God, after God purges floor, after the cleansing, in that day, seven women shall take old, shall take hold of one man, saying, "We'll eat our own bread." That means they want to do their own thing, right? They want to do their own thing. But who is the real bread? of heaven who is the bread of life jesus you, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel they want to wear their own justice instead of wearing the justice of jesus christ while all of, of our justice is like a filthy rag let us only be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day, seven women, seven, signify the completed. What a woman in prophecy means a church. The completed of Christendom. Shall take a hold of one man, Christ. They will be called Christian. But they want to do their own thing. I'm going somewhere. They want to do their own thing. They don't want to vindicate God's character by keeping the commandment of God. But it is in that day that God is preparing the people to vindicate his character. Because we have seen that God must produce this people that people are sitting win the good controversy. So at that same time, when all the churches are coming together with their own eating their own bread, wearing their own apparel, just having the name Christian, God is preparing a remnant, a real remnant to keep God's commandment and have the testimony of Jesus. And who is the leader? Of that church, that Protestant church, who does that thing and lead others to follow along and, and then gather them into ecumenism, it is the Roman Universal Church. Now, the human woman, you know, we find in God's church the color red. And a, scar a scarlet, let me see if that's in, in English. I can use that word in English. Scarlet, yeah. Scarlet and purple. This is the color which God church has. Have. But that woman there, which, which is the seven representing by herself, the seven women, the Christendom in, in completude, she has the same color of dress too. Let us let us see. Revelation chapter 17 in verse 1 to 5. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talk with me saying unto me, Come either, I will show you unto thee the judgment of the great R that sitted upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. 
So he carried me in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of name of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed. Listen, listen. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Same color than God's church. But it is a different woman. It's not the same woman of Revelation chapter 12. Scarlet color and deck decked with gold and precious stone and pearls having a golden cup in her. What is the church who, assemble, who has a cup as a symbol in her hand? Well, I'm not calling names. In her hand, full of the of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And listen now. Upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of our lords and abomination of the earth. The name written on this forehead. If you saw the previous video, the name written of the forehead of the four one hundred forty-four thousand is the name of the father. But the name of that woman, church, is a mystery. We church proclaim to have a doctrine, a doctrine which is the central of all their doctrine, every other doctrine is built upon that one single doctrine, which is not biblical, which is part of the wine of Babylon, which is not biblical, but it is a center. We claim to have a doctrine which is a mystery with church that with with all that with all the other church, six other churches, because there are seven churches, as Isaiah 4 1. Which church is this? And what is that's doctrine which is a mystery. The Trinity God, the foundation of all false religion. No doctrine is more fundamental or more emphasized in Freemasonry that, than that of the Trinity. It comes to us from the MasonicWorld.com out of the mouth of the lion himself. You cannot see JL. I didn't see anything. I'm just reading. I'm just reading, saints. Don't even comment on my thing. I'm just reading. What is Freemasonry? Satanism. So that's mean that church, which has this doctrine as its fundamental, Satanism, and all the other church follow along, including nominal Seventh-day Adventists, is 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 deck is is dressed with scarlet and and uh, purple. Listen, what this church claim once again: the mystery of the Trinity is the central doctrine of the Catholic. I didn't say it. I'm reading of the Catholic faith. Upon it are based all the other teaching of the church. End book for today's Catholic page 11. So you see, beloved, but this church is dressed exactly like the church of God. How do we make the difference to know which is which? Because now even as the nominal, they believe in the Trinity. How do we make the difference? Because the belief in the Trinity, what does it do? Let me tell you what, the, what, what it does. We have seen that the accusation of Satan is against God's character and his character is found in his law. The doctrine of the Trinity come take away from the law of God. The first commandment, thou shalt have no other God before me. It's only verse 3, verse 4, thou shalt not make no, uh, uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any grieven image or any likeness of things that is in heaven, in uh, above or in the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the of the father on the, upon the children on, unto the third and fourth generation 
of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them sorry that love me and keep my commandment thou shalt not take the name uh, of of the lord thy god in vain the name the character the authority for the lord will not hold them guiltless that that take it his name is vain and finally you should all be able to quote this one Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because you can worship the right day but the wrong God. You see how far the doctrine of Trinity can destroy? Do you see, saints? But I said, I, well, I said that church has the same color. Church of God has, has scarlet and purple, but I voluntarily omitted on it was on purpose so that church is missing something that the church the color that the church of god have so the prostitute church prostitute woman is missing a color in a dress and what is that color number 15 verse 38 to 40 speak unto the children of israel and bid them that they make them that they, they make them fringes in their her borders of their garment throughout their generation. I am Israelite, a real Israelite, because the real Israelite are the seven dead Adventists, says the spirit of prophecy. All right? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders as a ribbon of what is the color missing? Of blue. Blue. That's the color missing in the robe of the prostitute. She has the same color than, than the church of God, but she's missing one color. She's missing the color blue. But she's not missing the color blue. She take it away voluntarily. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. We will eat our own bread, wear our own apparel. She did it voluntarily. She take away, she took away the color blue. Because what does that color blue represent? And it shall be unto you for a French that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandment of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye used to go a warring that ye may remember and do all my commandment and be holy to your God. What does the color blue in the dress represent? Commandment of God. So now we see what happened. So we see that now we're going to finalize the will aftermath. The will aftermath of the 144,000 of that will remnant. The will aftermath is still in Isaiah. So we had Isaiah 4 verse 1, Isaiah 4 verse 2, Isaiah 4 verse 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion after the Lord had do his great slaughter, he that is left in Zion, Ezekiel 9, after he that is left in Zion, he that remaineth, remaineth from what? From the great slaughter, that escape that great slaughter, because go. Oh, Slay men or any woman, both young, old, slay. Let not your eyes have mercy and begin by my sanctuary. So he that remained it in Jerusalem shall be shall be called holy. Victor of sin, thy way, O God, is in holiness, shall be called holy. Shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. So the judgment of the dead is over. It started in 1844. Now we are in the judgment of the living, and nobody knows when your name's gonna come. Your name may come today, and tomorrow you die. Bashan is close for you when you're dead. 
don't don't keep on your mind that it's going to only close when Sabbath, when National Sunday, Sunday, when the National Sunday law comes. You can die at any moment. Crossing the street, you can get hit by a car, a drunken driver. Among the living, so this is the judgment. We are in the judgment of the living. This is the most solemn message to be given for this time. The judgment of the living. Because as I said, the great controversy too is between Lucifer and Satan. And we are in the middle. That's what we are doing in the judgment of Daniel 7. Our decision, our character, our action, our lives will determine in which side we are taking. And where your heart is, this is where you will also be. In eternal fire which was not prepared for men, but for the fallen angels. But if you are from God, you will be God, but we are Christ to be one in that great controversy. So those who will, will that remain will be called holy. And what will happen when this happens? Psalm 1 verse 4, verse, verse 4 and 5 says, The ungodly are not so but are like chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Meaning the church will become so holy that many will not be able, able to bear the testimony of the true witness and they will leave. They will leave the church. And now God is going to bring. He's going to, no, he's not going to bring. <laughs> I don't want to get to next week. Don't miss next week's sermon. But now he's going to use those 144,000 for a special mission. Don't miss next week. So what happened after church militant? Become the church triumphant. The character of God fully reproduced upon his people. Christ is now ready to come because when the character Christ is longing, is waiting with longing, with a uh, longing expectation that his character may be reproduced in his people, when his character shall be perfectly reproduced, then he will come and receive the people for his own. Christ object lesson page 69 so the church triumphant now militant now become the church triumphant listen how solomon described them who is solomon songs of solomon on uh, 6 verse 10 who is she she the woman who present a church that look forth as the morning fair as the moon clear as the sun listen 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 listen, 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 listen. excited for you i'm excited for you and terrible Terrible as, a, as an army with banners. Hmm. Oh, okay. We should all start singing the same song I'm singing. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on order thou art calling, do not pass me by. Who is she that look forth as this morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? Banner. So, God says, God says, and I was Isaiah sixty-six verse nineteen, and I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape, escape from the great slaughter of them unto the nation to Tarshish, pull and lewd to that draw the bow. To Tubal and Javan and the isles of far off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. This last one, I give it to you so that you can remember. So, come from there next week, so you know exactly what's the special mission for the 144,000 now. 
who reflect perfectly God's character that will enlighten the whole world with God's glory. So that many of you keep saying, deceive, believe that God is all, is only, is Jesus has only come for the children of Israel, for the lost sheep of Israel. Heading back to 24, 14, which we're going to consider and we're going to see that it's going to be done in time. So hard, so difficult because what the church could have do in time of ease, they're going to have to do it in time of trouble. Woman 10, 14. You're going to see, and of course, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. You're going to see all those who say Christ has only come for the children of Israel, for the Lordship of Israel, and have no balance. Practicing the great commission instead of the great commission, leading them to be a disobedience that's mean not sealed, not be part of the 144,000 loss because you are insubordinated to the, the commandment of the master. But this next week is going to be shocking because you see, in any commandment you disobey, you are now up to receive the mark of the beast because we think the mark of the beast is about sabbath and sunday you get it all wrong you get it all wrong you have been programmed and you get it all wrong you know nothing about sabbath and sunday you can keep this all the sabbath you want break one of the commandment and you will be lost for the love of god consists Keep his commandment, and his commandment are not burdensome. If it's just about a question about a matter of Sabbath versus Sunday, then the Jewish are okay. Seven day Sabbath as Baptist are okay. Seven day Pentecostal are okay. But the third angel's message that will take, uh, that will swell into a loud cry with the message of the fourth angel is beholding Christ. On a, on, on a cross, dying, agonizing for a wretched man like me. Therefore, it creates in me, it produces in me a love back that even if there was a law forbidding me to buy or to sell, I would rather die before I sin against my Lord. I am so in Lord, in love with my Lord that it would be death before the sun. It's about keeping all God's commandment, being perfect. Why we preach the Sabbath, we put the Sabbath in the middle of all this, is because without the Sabbath, you don't have 10 commandments, but 10 suggestions. Therefore, we're going to hold to Ten Commandments and keep the Sabbath holy and keep all the commandments of God through Jesus working His righteousness in us so that we don't appear before God with our own righteousness, which is nothing but filthy right. That was the humble servant, Brother J.L. for M2A Medical Missionary. God bless you.